He just brings me joy. One of my favorite brings you joy. Man, I think that's like super fed up. Dude, what? Hey everyone, if you never saw it before, you wouldn't believe it was real. Have you guys seen it? Because we haven't. All right, let's jump into it. What is that? I don't know. What is nah, that? Y'all seem to think I know everything like I'm a walking encyclopedia, but if I'm being honest here, I know what the f that was supposed to be like. I had to go in the comments for this. And apparently that's not a deformity. That's actually oh. what they're supposed to look like. It's a Damascus uh. goat. It originated in Middle East countries and is primarily used for meat and milk. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say God makes mistakes, but that huh. still makes me think his draft and post buttons are way too close to each other. <laughs> also, a Damascus named God won a prize for most beautiful goat in a contest in 2008, proving that some of y'all would lie oh. and provoke for no f***ing reason. Y'all can call him beautiful, but tell me this goat thing crawl straight out the goonies. They actually <laughs> yeah, look somewhat for real. normal as babies, but then I guess puberty hits them like Hiroshima. It's honestly the pug of goats, and I truly mean that. Damn. Damn. some comments on the internet saying, oh, he just wants love. I rebuke that. He wants my life essence. We played God <laughs> with goats, now we got Barnyard and Dark Souls, and I do not like it. And I could have sworn Satan took the form of a goat. Actually, this makes a lot of sense now. You know y'all don't gotta tag me. <laughs> Satan every took the form of a goat. Like, what do you expect me to say? Like, his existence looks like pain. And for y'all that are gonna sit there and Ooh. tell me that he actually looks cute, I pay way too much for context for y'all to lie about what's in front of my face. Crazy thing is, this is the second most disturbing goat video I've ever seen. Oh, Hello? dude, no way. Have you seen that video? No. That, like, just look at that. I'm looking at it. Yeah, it, then they close the door, yeah. and then just still looking at him like that. What? I've seen videos where people are like, this is one of those, like, shapeshifters. Right. Because, like, it's a whatever possession. the fuck this is. Yeah. It's a weird, weird reaction. Damn. Absolutely not. And no ah! creature gives a New Yorker a heart attack. Why is it flapping? Oh, a bat. Is it a bat? I both can and cannot fully explain what that is. It's called a kalugo, but it's also known as a flying lemur, even though there's somehow two A flying lemur? What? They don't fly, they glide. And since they spend most of their lives in their trees, they basically just airdrop themselves from branch to branch. And it's not a lemur. Ew. Lemurs are primates, uh. all of them related to gorillas, chimps, and us. But this thing isn't a primate. Whoever named it would probably name an atheist faith. They use that shaky <laughs> membrane. Oh, oh wow. Oh, you travel six without stopping. That's 200 meters. What did you say? He's at 600 feet, feet without stopping? That's not a flying 50 feet without stopping. They use that stretchy membrane called a patagium to glide like flying squirrels, and they can travel 650 feet without stopping. Oh! Holy crap! A little bit less than two football fields. But it's not a flying squirrel. There was a time people thought they were just God's rough draft of a bat, but Kalugos aren't related to bats either. And if you look at the order they're in, Dermotera, they're the only living members. It's like pulling up to a family reunion and finding out you're the only one left. Oh. And because their entire oh. personality involves flying, they're too slow and awkward to survive on the ground. And for an animal that lives in the trees, they're pretty mid-climbers. They're so bad at life that being nocturnal yeah. is probably the only thing keeping them alive. Mother Damn. Kalugos will carry their babies everywhere for the first six months. Which made some people believe it was a marsupial, like some type of deformed air koala. But it's none of those things. <laughs> what the f*** is it? <laughs> well, scientists perform genetic analyses on them. Basically a 23andMe for a flying carpet. And it turns out their closest evolutionary relative are primates. It's pretty much the closest you can get to primates without actually being one. Which means this dehydrated Dollar Tree chipmunk is more related to you than it is to an actual squirrel or bitch. Wow. Jesus. You know. Anyone know what this Here's is? why you should never touch this. Oh, we heard these Pets are deadly. Atlanticus. It's a type of nudibranch, but it's also known as a sea slug. It's also a gastropod mollusk. I'm not okay. gonna bore you with a whole biology lesson, but gastropod means it's related to snails, and mollusk means it pulls up to the same cookout as octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. Also, touching one like this is a creative way of saying you want to pay more for health insurance. Because these slugs oh. will eat venomous siphonophores like the Portuguese man of war and steal its venom to use to handle its own light work. It stores the venom in its tissue, so if a predator or a person gets too close, they'll get 50 shades of f around and find out. Do I cuss too much? Like, I know kids watch me, but then again, they watch Family Guy before 4th grade, so I don't even know anymore. <laughs> and just like the Portuguese Cerro Scuffle, the Glaucus can still hand out painful life lessons even after its soul's already ascended. Basically, they don't need to be alive to put you in the hospital. So if you see one on the that beach, sucks. it's definitely a look, but don't touch. Because if anything's that small and that colorful, there's probably a good reason they don't need to hide. Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah. This blue yeah. check can be found off the coast of South Africa in European waters off the east coast of Australia because Australia and some have even been found in the Gulf of California. There are also hermaphrodites that mate by sword fighting and stabbing each other. Normally in nature, the winner gets the female, but here the loser becomes one. The more you know. Here's the story of how uh -oh. 76 beavers were parachuted into Idaho, and yes, that is a thing that happened. Excuse me? So in the 1940s, the people of Idaho had beef with the buck tooth beaver population, mainly because their habit of taking down trees was causing floods in people's yards and damage to gardens. Oh, because beavers wow. actually contribute to society, 
unlike some of the people complaining about them, the government decided <laughs> that instead of squad wiping them, it would just be better to move them to another area code. The only problem was the moving process for beavers involved putting them in boxes and Ubering them via horses and mules. This was the 40s, Aww. there was no beaver U-Haul. These boxes would overheat and the beavers would become so stressed Spits. that they would refuse to eat and the horses and mules carrying them eventually got pressed too. It was a bad time for everyone involved. So they realized they had to get creative. And apparently creative meant tying the boxes to parachutes from World War II and literally airdropping them into the Idaho wilderness. What? Huh? But of course you can't just eat a beaver out of a plane without being sure you weren't just committing beaver slaughter with extra steps. So they experimented the best and safest ways to drop beavers from a plane and the test subject they used was an old bin around the block beaver named Geronimo. You really can't make this up. After using old man Geronimo to figure out the perfect height and area to drop the beavers, it was time. August 14, 1948 was D-Day as 76 beavers were loaded into crates and flown in a twin engine where they skydived to their new home. And these furry paratroopers had a 99% success rate. But only because one of the beavers managed to escape and jump out of the box when he was 76 feet from the ground and took himself off the census when he met the ground. Oh, okay. the rest of the Air Force beavers managed to land safely on the ground and were able to crawl out the box and explore the new neighborhood and begin a new beaver life. And to most people, this was a success. PETA wasn't happy about it, but you know, PETA gone PETA. Also, it turns out each parachuting beaver cost taxpayers about seven bucks a beaver, so I'd say it worked out pretty well. Today, we have better ways to control the okay. beaver population, <laughs> but something about 76 beavers being airmailed and parachuted like some DLC just brings me joy. One of my favorite brings all-time joy? Facts was Man, that I think that's like weapon. super fucked up. Dude, what? Can These... you imagine being that beaver not knowing what the fuck's going on? Be like, alright, we're just going for a little ride. I'm fucking falling from the sky! <laughs> that's crazy! They just like, it just sounds so ridiculous. Like, yeah, yeah let's just put 70 plus beavers in boxes and just and airdrop just them. them. Just be like, yeah, okay. That's ridiculous. See you later. What the hell, man? Weaponized otters for some reason, because the 60s were a weirder drug year time, I guess. But they were low key onto something. Because otters are smart enough to use tools, tough enough to survive the freezing ocean without blubber. They'll square up and run fades with jaguars and caiman, I've seen them do it. <laughs> and even though they look like plush toys, they have the power to seriously f*** you up if you give them a reason. But like oh. honey badgers with better swim time. Ugh. So someone in the CIA created a report called the Otter Dossier, and I'm gonna read you my favorite parts. According to the Otter Dossier, they can be trained to climb ladders and stairs, can carry objects underwater, open zippers, throw objects with their mouth, and turn on faucets. They somehow figured out that a motivated water weasel can chew through a zinc sheet, and I honestly couldn't tell Yo, you Yo, what? There's a lot of other stuff in there too, like how to properly take care of otter pups, because apparently they get diarrhea. A lot. But oh. by far my favorite oh. part is where they say otters are easy to train, but they can become too devoted to humans, which can lead to their destruction. Uh. <laughs> yeah, honestly, same. What? The report also mentions that they're almost impossible to transport because an otter that feels confined can and will attempt to destroy anything trying to escape. The report also specifically says never to take food from an otter because, and I might be paraphrasing here, take their food and they take your fingers. And in fact, the exact quote was, never take food from an otter, particularly that which he has just caught or suffered severe mauling. Jeez. Yeah, someone got really f***ed up for them to put that there. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, if you have the seriously. Choice, please read the whole report. I'm gonna put it in the comments. I mean, there's a chance the report's fake and none of this ever happened, but it's so detailed. Like, too much effort went into it for it to be a lie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy. Video, otters are smart, nasty, and they give less f than a prom night virgin. Basically, weapons of otter destruction. Turkey's performing demon ritual on past tense cat. What? Oh my god. So there's actually a really interesting and complex reason why turkeys do this. Turkeys are so f***ing stupid that it's actually medically fascinating. <laughs> like, they're not dumb enough to stare at the sky during a storm and reverse baptize themselves. That's actually a well-known myth. But they are brain cell deficient enough to not tell the difference between a threat to their way of life and an expired cat. It's likely the turkeys are curious about the past tense cat, but too paranoid to get too close to the course because, again, turkeys have no idea it's dead and no way of knowing if it's dangerous. Oh, what you're wow. seeing is a prey response that only an animal locked in the basement of the food chain can come up with. <laughs> As for circling, <laughs> birds like turkeys, chickens, and pheasants will instinctively follow the tail of the bird in front of them. It's a behavior that helps keep them together as a flock since holding hands isn't really an option. So oh, pretty much no. these turkeys are stuck in a never-ending cycle of follow the leader, but none of them actually identify as one, so they do. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the ant video, the ants. where like, they just go in like, infinite circles, yeah. and just they just keep following each other. because one person's in charge, and they forgot what they were doing. Not even, they're just like, I, uh, uh, I guess the best thing I could do is just follow the guy in front of me. <laughs> oh no. Just keep going. And fun fact, this bird was almost the mascot of America. Since a guy named Ben Franklin thought bald eagles were cowardly scavengers that didn't deserve the clout. Dude. But if you YouTube what a bald eagle really sounds like, he might have been on timing. So yeah, turkeys are, uh... 
I'm not gonna say they're stupid, but I'm not gonna say they're aware of the world either. Someone asked me what I think the most underrated animal in the world is, and I instantly thought of this picture. Goats really do be goating. The bottom of their hooves are soft as they contour to the surface they're climbing, which allows them to be a middle finger to the laws of physics. This isn't photoshopped. These are the tree climbing goats of Morocco. They Whoa. figured out that the fruits of the argan tree are an easy source of food, and when nature says climb, goats say how high. This is an <laughs> alpine ibex. They'll scale up the San Gino Dam in Italy just to lick the salt off the stones and let the rest of the world wonder how. For y'all that think goats are just some hippie free climbing sheep, they eat their Wheaties. Some male mountain goats can tip the scales at over 300 pounds. Oh my God, that's huge. Fade with a grizzly, and it was the bear that got turned into a trophy. Wow! That's smoke for you too if you want it. Hikers have been warned when going through the Olympic National Trail in Washington because the mountain goats there have started harassing people. The reason is because the mountain goats there have gotten addicted to the salt and human sweat and pee, and they'll press them just to get their fix. <gasps> Damn! On wow! A trail, their area code is like a Batman signal to a fiending goat. Oh, no, no, no. One actually no. took a man off the census and wouldn't even let first responders get near his body. Those goats became such a menace that they had to be airdropped somewhere what? else. What? What's again? Minute, but out of all the bears, what? tigers, and wolves, goats are the real Gs, but like lasagna, they move. What is happening with airdropping animals? Why is that? Why is that the solution? Seriously, can't you just, like you know shoo them? I mean, in the forties, <laughs> okay, maybe in the forties, but that seemed like a current photo. <laughs> like, what the hell? Damn, dude, animals be really fucking shit up, and then like <laughs> the only solution we have: put them in the air, them. drop them into the ground. <laughs> Ugh. Move in silence. You only have three seconds. If you can't find it, you're already dead. I can't shit. find it. Shit. All right, time's up. Here's why you always look up if you're under a tree in Tanzania. That is a leopard. Leopards are the best climbers of oh. any big cat, and they'll stalk their victims from branches. Damn! Put them in God's recently deleted, and they'll wait up in the trees for hours for the right opportunity to strike. And if you try to escape by climbing up the tree, that'd be like stealing Michael Phelps wall and then swan yeah. diving into a pool. That's their home court. <laughs> That's only one reason you should be careful under trees, because leopards carry their meals up in <gasps> trees where they don't have to pay food taxes to lions or hyenas. And leopards are so freakishly strong that they can deadlift animals heavier than they are up into the trees using only their mouth. That's wow. ridiculous. But because leopards uh. keep anything they can't finish up in the trees, you can really become a hashtag if a leopard's lunch gets airdropped to the back of your head. Which means at least <laughs> once in the history of mankind, a child became an orphan because a half-eaten rhino fell from a tree and put his father in a Twitter bio. And when I say leopards oh, will fly, my wow. God. I mean, they don't have fall damage, or at least they don't think they do. Leopards have a hit list of over 90 different species of animal, and they're so good at stat padding that they'll sometimes accidentally Look at those claws. Them. Oh no. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh! Yeah, so ah. This animal sends more people to the ER than bears, wolves, and cougars combined. No way! The American bison is the heaviest thing with a heartbeat in North America, maxing out at over 2,200 pounds. They can also grow to 10 feet long, run you down at 35. If you try to run from the smoke by hopping over a fence, a motivated bison can clear a six-foot fence. Now, there's two reasons why this guy is seriously whoa, testing whoa, his whoa, life insurance. Whoa, 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 whoa. One is because they're pretty much legally blind, so like rhinos, they respond to anything that moves with violence. And two is because a bison is a great value meal for predators. Wolves and grizzlies have been known to smoke an appa pack, and mountain lions will target unaccompanied oh, baby bison. That generational trauma means a bison is more likely to turn a person into a chalk outline that, if they okay. get out of line. The difference that's, between a that's bear a big and an boy. Like that's a big fucking... That was way bigger that than that car. Massive. Oh, it was a regular looking car. It was also like rude as fuck that that bison knocked over his pal and was like, sorry, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man. Holy shit. Oof. Moose or bison as a bear looks at you and has to decide if you're even worth the effort. A bison assumes you're going to turn him into calories and a barrel roll you first. But because bison in national parks are used wow. to being around people, they're usually pretty chill unless you get too close. Only problem is, getting too close is how pictures like this happen. Uh. Someone had to go home with no pants. And explain that she lost them because she couldn't social distance from a tank with horns. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Because bison isn't just a name. It's what your parents are going to say at your casket if Oppa decides to turn up on you. Ooh. Horrifying sound of a woman becoming a hashtag. I'm going to guess that's not a woman. The that, biggest mistake you could like make is going all. to save that woman. Because that's not a woman getting turned into a headline. That was a female mountain lion in heat. Female oh, wow. cougars often oh. make these shrieking blood thought it was a bird, honestly. when they're in estrus. It's like their Batman signal for getting laid. Answering oh, that question what? Uh, for you is how you meet Batman's parents. Oh, of course, shit. I'm exaggerating. Cougars are way more afraid of you and will probably go the other way if you pull up on them. What won't go away are the bricks in your pants after you try to be a hero and make eye contact with this walking steroid. I know it's not related, but I'm still going to mention it. 
Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to fool them into a false sense of security before they turn them into a hashtag. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, this is a Margay and they do the exact same thing with baby monkeys. Now I'm not saying the cougars do it on purpose, but I am saying that nature is a bitch like that. Also, I forgot to mention that cougars tend to scream while mating. So if you're ever alone in bed and hear a woman on a Tinder date with Joe from you, don't worry. It's oh. just cougars getting more action than you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's disturbing, honestly. Yeah, you what know, the hell? penguins will sell themselves, but like, in What that are those way? eyes? Let me explain. This is an Adeli penguin. If you hear a messed up penguin fact, it usually involves them. Uh, so uh. basically, Adelis build their nests out of piles of pebbles, which means two things. Pebbles are a penguin's form of currency, and the penguin with the most pebbles is considered the most attractive. <laughs> okay. So Adeli penguins will offer their bodies to males in exchange for a rock, and yeah, it's exactly what I'm making it sound like. Sometimes the female will give it up to a male in exchange for a pebble, even though she already has a mate waiting for her back at the nest. What? Scientists can't really confirm this, but it's believed the females do this so that if their mate gets packed up by a seal or something, they still have a backup. Damn. Doesn't stop there, because a lot of times the female will pretend to be interested in the single male, and right when the male thinks he's about to get it in, she takes the pebble and runs back to her actual mate. That's so. The best example I can think of is if you buy a girl a drink only for her to take it and bring it over to her man on the other side. Yeah, right? <laughs> Basically, these penguins pull a Cardi B, but, you know, without the Cosby part. And before you feel bad for them, just remember that male Adelis have been known to have relations with injured females, chicks, penguin corpses, and one even hooked up with the ground. To completion. Penguins okay. are dressed as Wall Street Ooh. brokers and they have the moral compass of one too. That's so weird. Look at him go. A reminder that reindeer will eat this special magic mushroom that'll get them so high that they'll wander around aimlessly and make a bunch of weird drunken noises. And the mushroom's toxic to us. <laughs> Wait, you know what? The reindeer that's eating it, you too can get elevated and hella faded. Basically getting R. Kelly by Yo, reindeer, why are you believing you can fly as well? The more you know. <laughs> That's crazy! That was such a quick fact, but <laughs> no. that was hilarious. Oh my god. Ugh. It like levels up like Mario. Yeah. In a different kind of a way. Yeah. She's the world in a whole different, different light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some of these animal facts are insane. Yeah. Oh, I love this channel. It just like <laughs> teaches me something so ridiculous. Didn't well, know, I didn't know some of these existed. Yeah. The weird goat in the beginning. It looked like a deformity, but that's a real goat breed. That's a real goat breed. And the fact that goats can just like climb anything. Yeah. Impressive. That's crazy. <laughs> well, on that note, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, see ya. Bye.